Hey there, everyone. I'm all alone here in my Google, uh, today's Google Meet. So I'm just going to go over the homework for last night. Um, and you can watch it later, I guess. Okay, so finding the slope of this line, uh, it would be the change in Y. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six. So that's uh, six up. And then, so it would be six up. And then one, two, three, four to the right, which is a slope of three halves. Okay, so that was the answer to number one. Um, number two, uh, let's see, where was I? Or number three, I should say, write the slope intercept form of equation of the line. All right, let me blow this up a little bit. All right, so I'm gonna solve the equation for y. So that means I have to subtract two x from both sides. And then after I do that, I'm gonna divide by three. So when I divide by three, I get y equals negative two thirds x plus three. So that would be that one. Number five, uh, I would subtract 7x and then divide by negative 2. So after I subtract 7x, I get negative 2y equals negative 7x minus 8. So once I move that over to the other side, divide by negative 2. Everything by negative 2. And I get y equals 7 halves x plus 4. All right, number seven, uh, I'm just going to have to multiply everything by the, oh, no, I'm sorry, the slope of the line. So I'm going to put in a slope intercept form, and then I'm going to uh, look and see what m is and y equals mx plus b. So to do that, I'm solving for y, so I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal. Okay, so reciprocal of negative four thirds is negative three fourths. So I have to distribute the negative three fourths. I get y equals three fourths x, and then that's going to give me minus three. So the slope is going to be three fourths. Okay, slope of a line parallel. Uh, well, this has a slope of negative one third, so a line parallel is also going to have a slope of negative one third. Perpendicular line. Uh, it's the negative reciprocal, so I want to put this in slope-intercept form. So if I divide everything by 4, I can get, I'll end up with y equals 1 fourth x plus 5. Slope is 1 fourth. Negative reciprocal of 1 fourth is negative 4 over 1, which is negative 4. Okay, sketching the graph of y equals x minus 5. So m... The coefficient of x is 1, and b is negative 5. So that means I'm going to start at negative 5, and a slope of 1 is 1 over 1. Uh, the numerator is up or down. The denominator is left or right. In this case, I have two positive values, so I'm going to go up 1 and over 1, up 1 and over 1. And then I would uh, connect the dots, and that's my line. All right, um, here I'm going to move the x over to the left and the, the y over to the right and then switch either side of the equal sign. So, so I would add x to both sides. I would add y to both sides. That gives me y equals, because those drop out, x plus 5. Um, and once again, that's a slope of 1. So, because it's mx, m is 1. So, 1 is the same thing as 1 over 1, which is up 1 to the right 1. And then, lastly, I will connect the dots. Let's see how well I can do it. Eh, not too bad. Okay, 17. Write the slope intercept form of the line. Uh, this is a bit of a trick for this one. This equation is x equals 2. Uh, that's just as an equation, uh, or it's function. You, there's no y in its equation. Vertical line, 
uh, X uh, is a number. I'll just do number 18 since that's a little more traditional. B is four. So, so Y equals MX plus B. B is four and then slope, I'm gonna find two points that are on the grid where the grid lines intersect. And I go one, two, three, four, down four and to the right one. So that's minus is down and positive is to the right. So that means I have Y equals negative four X plus four. All right, then slope intercept equation. All right, so you need to do point slope form and then solve for y. So point slope form is y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. Um, x1 and y1 are negative 2 and negative 1. So I would have y minus negative 1 equals 3 times x minus negative 2. So that's uh, y plus 1 equals 3x plus 6. Subtract 1. And I get y equals 3x plus 5. All right, so, so that's the slope intercept form of that line. Wow, lots of highlighting colors here. Okay, then uh, through two, negative three, slope of negative two. All right, do the same thing here. This is uh, this is my x one, y one. So I would get uh, y plus three equals negative two x minus two. So now if I solve for y, first of all, I'm going to distribute. I get y plus 3 equals negative 2x plus 4. Subtract 3. And I get y equals negative 2x uh, plus 1. All right. Um, and then the last few here are they actually give you two points. So this is one extra step in the beginning um, compared to the last two problems we just did. Uh, first of all, you have to find the slope and then use a point and the slope, write the point slope form of the line and then rewrite it in slope intercept form by solving for y. So the slope here is going to be negative 3 minus 2. Remember, this is x1, y1, x2, y2. So negative 3 minus 2 over negative 4 minus 3. So that gives you negative five sevenths. So now I'll do uh, the point slope. I'll use one of the points and the slope. Um, and I get, let's see, y, I'll use the first point. Y minus two equals negative five sevenths X and then minus two. Okay, so this seems a little, let me, minus three, minus two, minus four. Oh. Uh, you know what? It's positive five sevenths. Uh, positive five sevenths. Um, minus four, minus three. Yeah, that seems to be right. Okay, so now I'm going to distribute. Uh, uh, let's see, plus. So that would be. Uh, or minus 10 sevenths. And then add two, and I get uh, 5 sevenths x. And then, okay, so adding two is the same thing as adding 14 sevenths. So uh, negative 10 sevenths plus 14 sevenths is going to give you 4 sevenths. Okay, so that would be my equation. And then the last one, we'll do the same way. Um, slope is negative 3 over 4 because 2 minus 5 is negative 3. 4 minus 0 is 4. So that would be negative 3 fourths. And then I'm just going to do y minus 5 equals negative 3 fourths 
x minus zero. So I'll use the first point and the slope and the point slope form of the line equation. So that gives you y minus five equals negative three fourths x. And then y equals negative three fourths x plus five. And that is my answer if I did it right. Hopefully I did. Okay, so um, today uh, I was going to start into, we we're just going to do linear inequalities really quickly. And then we're going to do piecewise functions, uh, which will be used for um, when we're computing in income taxes. So let me open today's notes. I think I put them in classroom already. So let me go and get them off of classroom. Uh, let's see, there they are. I'll download them. And save. Let me do show in folder, there we go. Open with PDF annotator. Okay, so uh, here we go. Um, linear inequality is basically an equality with two variables. Okay, so, so basically you have uh, a line uh, and the solution to the linear inequality is going to be all points that satisfy it, meaning all coordinates of pairs of x and y that if you substitute them into the inequality, you get a true statement. Now, there will typically be an infinite number of points because there's a whole lot of points that are on one side of the line, in fact, an infinite number of them. Okay, so this first one is an example of uh, a classic linear inequality, y greater than or equal to negative 4x minus 5. Um, solution set always divides the coordinate plane into two regions. Um, and just like I said, one of the regions, uh, the solution is the set of all points that satisfy uh, the inequality, and those coordinates make a true statement when substituted into the inequality for x and y. Uh, the boundary line formed by changing the inequality into a, an equation. Okay, the boundary line is part of is part of the solution with greater than or equal to or less than or equal to inequalities and is drawn as a solid line. Um, if it's not part of the solution set, you may have a greater than symbol or less than symbol uh, and it's drawn as a either dotted or dashed line to indicate that. Okay, uh, so, uh, so how, do you, how do you graph uh, linear inequality? Well, you first graph the boundary line. Sometimes some people call it the border line. Uh, and you either make it a dashed line or a dotted line. I mean, a dashed or a solid line. Then you decide which side to shade. So if you have, here's a trick. If you have the line in uh, slope intercept form that, or the boundary line, the inequality in, in slope intercept form, then the, the less than uh, sign indicates that you're going to shade the side that is kind of more on the, on the downside. Uh, whereas a greater than indicates that you're going to say shade a side that's more on the, on the upside. So uh, let's see how that works out. Okay, my first one here, excuse me, y is less than or equal to 3 fifths x plus 5. I go to 5. Um, I'm going to graph the boundary line. I'm going to go negative three fifths is going to be down one, two, three, and to the left five, one, two, three, four, five. So that's the same as three fifths, but I was going to go off the graph. So I did the app reverse and I made both of them negative uh, and got a point in the other direction. Okay. This is less than or equal to, so we're going to get a solid, oops, that's not even close.
All right, and then I have a less than or equal to symbol. That mean, and I have my equation in slope intercept form. That means I'm going to graph this side, the downside. All right, the alternative to kind of that trick is to pick a test point, substitute it in for x and y. And if you get a true statement, you shade the same side as the test point. If you get a false statement, you shade the other side. So if I put 0 and 0 in for x and y, I get 0 is less than or equal to 5. That's true. So that would mean I would shade the same side as the test point, which is the downside. All right. So in order to make this move along, I'm just going to not do every single example because this is Algebra 1. Um, you may not have done this for a while, but you did learn it and possibly went over in Algebra 2 as well. Um, or integrated algebra. All right, so here we go. Uh, I'm going to first write this in slope intercept form. So I have to move the x over to the right and then divide by 4. So when I do that, I get, first of all, I get uh, 4y equals negative x plus 12. I should say greater than negative x plus 12. Uh, oh, yeah, and this brings up a very important point. Um, when you divide, when you have a linear inequality or a regular inequality with one variable, and you divide by a negative number, you have to reverse the direction of the inequality sign, which I think is going to happen in the, in the next problem. Okay, so now I divide by 4. I get y is greater than negative 1 fourth x plus 3. So I go to 3. I go down one and to the right four. This is greater than, so I'm going to be doing a dotted line. Let's see, where can I get my dotted line? Um, there's one. So let's see how close I can get. Eh, good enough. And then greater than, so I'm going to shade the greater than side. So, oops can do a better job than my four-year-olds. There we go. All right, so that would be the solution. Uh, this next one I'm just going to do uh, so to show you that um, uh, uh, what happens when you have to divide by negative three. So I'm going to do the boundary line. It's going to be greater than or equal to negative x minus 15. Divide by negative 3. So when I divide by a negative number, I am really have to switch the direction of the inequality sign. So I end up with y equals 1 third x plus 5. I go to the 5 on the y-axis. That's the 5. And up 1 over 3 is that. OK, I have less than or equal to. So that means I'm doing a solid line, not a dotted line, a solid one. Right. And then I have great, less than or equal to. That means I'm going to shade the downside, not the upside, the downside. Oh, so speaking of which, here's a joke. The pessimist says to the optimist, it can't get any worse. The optimist says, sure it can. <laughs> I just read that yesterday. Uh, something about the downside made me think of that. OK, so then finally uh, is a system of inequality. So we may even do a problem with uh, related to finances here, with which will involve cost uh, uh, income maximization given constraints. But for now, we're just going to graph a system of inequality. So a system is two um, inequalities, and the solution is the set of values that satisfy all of the inequalities. And, and it's the section where their shading overlaps. Okay, so I'll just do one of these because. I've already been rattling on for 25 minutes. So here we go. 
Y is less than or equal to negative one half X plus three. Okay, I'm gonna go to three on the Y axis and then I'm gonna go down one and to the right two. All right, uh, I'm going to do a solid line because it's less than or equal to. Then I'm going to shade the downside because it's less than or equal to. And then um, I'll do the other one, one half X plus one, up one over two. This is gonna be a dotted line because it's less than, not less than or equal to, and it's greater than, so I'm going to shade the upside. And the solution is gonna be where the shading overlaps, which is in this region right here. Okay. Uh, so I'll just do one more of these and then we'll call it a day for this. Uh, you have a nice long weekend and so I'm not going to see you, and I say see in quotation marks, until Tuesday, I guess. So uh, plenty of time to do this homework. I'm also going to take a poll to see how many people have graph paper or any ability to uh, people who have no ability to print, make paper copies of things. And I may even try to, uh, uh, I can't promise, but I may even look up some of your addresses and drop off graph paper at your house because actually uh, might be important in a few things. Haven't decided for sure, but you're going to uh, have problems being really accurate without graph paper. Uh, for the homework, if you don't have graph paper, just do a sketch, all right? Uh, just sketch the X and Y axis, do a rough sketch of the line based on where its intercept should be and what its slope is. Uh, I realize it may not be perfect, but do a sketch and then you wanna draw a line for the systems. You wanna, when you do your shading, uh, if it's just one, one inequality, you can obviously just shade one side. Um, if it's two inequalities, you want to make it clear where their shade, the shading overlaps because that would be the solution. Okay, so here we go. Y equals negative one half X plus three. So I go to three, I go down one to the right two. It's going to be a solid line because I have the less than or equal to. So it's going to be that and it's going to be the downside. So the downside is going to be there. And now I have y is greater than one half x plus one. So um, so go to one, up one over two. This is going to be dotted, a dashed line or a dotted line. So. Uh, and then that's going to be the upside because it's greater than. Not, and let's see if yellow and blue really do make green. Well, sort of. I guess that is a light green. Yeah, it definitely does. Okay, so that means the solution is uh, right there. That's the solution set. Um, okay, that's it. Uh, hopefully that'll be enough for you to uh, uh, complete this homework. And remember, you should turn it in. I am gr grading it for completion for this marking period. Uh, it's all the more important now that you guys are seniors and only one marking period away from uh, uh, graduating. You need to make sure you're doing something. You're already getting a break because of not even have to going to school. So really need to be doing the homework. And uh, I hope to see more of you in the Google Meet. Uh, I had none today, kind of sad. Uh, so, um, you know, please join. All right.